Hey there, I'm Douglas from DraftPitch. In today's video, we're going to explore the picker component. This is a component which allows users to be able to select an item from a list of different options. You've probably seen this uh, used in forms, settings, or selection interfaces on many apps and websites. So how do we add this inside DraftPitch, right? So it's pretty simple. We come here to the components, we click add, then we're going to search for picker. Okay, once that's been added, we're going to notice a few things have happened. Okay, before that, this select option is, we're not really able to make it out. So we go on styles. So here we can style it out. Then there's this part where it says placeholder text color. So let's really put it uh, text color that we can see. Yeah, much better. We can now see it. Right. So by default, there are certain things that get created. So if you come here, it says variables. You can notice it created this variable called pick a value, right? And this is a string. Why did it do that? So if we go in the picker, then we go on the data tab, we're going to see this value called data source, right? So data source is when you pick this option, where is this picker going to publish the value to? So it's going to publish the value to this picker value that it created, right? So that's the beauty of it. It creates its own uh, variable where it's going to put the, the data to. And how does it put the data there? How does it know that it needs to put the data there? If we go in interactions, there's this thing called own value change. So own value change, right? It runs when the value changes. So anytime we come into, we're going to have some options in a moment and then you're going to see how it works. But basically think about this. When you have select an option, you click, you have a few options, apple, banana, uh, orange, you pick an orange, right? That's a value changing. When that value changes, this runs right so it's an action that runs we click it and see what what does it do so it's a trigger uh, it runs this action code set variable we click and then we're going to see it's going to set the picker value with the new picker value so whichever value you've clicked is going to set it to the picker value but for now let's just see how we can add options uh, into our picker right so there are many ways we can do this right so the first way we can add uh, options to this, so we come here, right? So this is where we add our options. One of the most, like we can say the best way to do it would be to have a backend API with a list uh, of these options formatted in an array. You're going to see in a moment how we format them. So you have the you have a backend API which has a list of these um, options formatted in an, in a nice way where we can send them here to the front end. And why we do that is because we have control. We can change them in the future, right? And then this way I'm going to show you, we can say it's the most simplest way, but then the only disadvantage is whenever you want to change, it's sort of like hard coding into the application. So whenever you want to change them in the future, you have to republish your application. So how do we do this way? We come here where it says variables. We click add variable. We're going to say picker options, right? And then this is going to be an object array, right? And then you come here with this initial value, right? So you don't click this, you click. So next to it, there's this uh, expansion. We click that. And then we the, it says text, JSON. We click JSON. And then we're going to create a JSON object. So this is how we do it. We open and close an array tag, right? Inside that array tag, we open an object. Since then, JSON object, right? Inside that, so this is how we format. Okay, perfect. Right, and then the first thing it takes is a label. The second thing it takes is a value, right? What do you want? So the label is what gets displayed to the user. The value is it what gets um, put into the picker uh, picker value, right? So we see in variables, there's this thing called a picker value, right? So when you click the label, what gets set to this picker value is what we're going to put in this value, right? So in this value, uh, in the label, we we'll say, uh, for example, we'd say apple, right? We'd say apple fruit, or maybe we can say apple juice, right? And on value, we don't want you to say juice. We just want you to say apple in lowercase, right? Let's copy that. 
paste paste right okay so this one instead of apple juice we can say orange juice then here we just say orange then last one you can say banana juice and then here for value we just say banana okay so this is the format that it takes then you can save that save that right so that's saved but you see it's still it's still not showing so how do we get it to show so in our picker properties we have this in on, on this data tab right so data source we talked about it is where the data is going to go and then here we see it says options right you come here click the drop down and then you're going to pick the variable that we just created and we just set a default value for so picker options right and then we see we see these values so we see apple juice we see orange juice we see banana juice right and then we can click the values perfect and then how do we really know that these values it's it's working and it's what what, what it says it is right we come here on our variables we need to see what the picker value uh, is holding right because essentially what it's doing when we click here at apple juice in the interactions right it's setting the picker value from the new value so basically yeah that's what it's doing so yeah so to be able to see the value we click here on the interactions which says on value change right so maybe before or after it says this variable we want to console log so log to the console right we add that okay what do we want to log to the console right the new picker value right so on value change gives us this action data value code new picker value that's the value you've clicked it gives it to us and then we want to console log it so we see what it says okay so now when we click apple juice orange or banana we should be able to see it in the console log right but before we can see any value in the console log we need to go to a preview mode so either on web ios or android so let's go on web for now okay and then we come down here where it says console logs we click that right uh, let's clear that okay here it says select an option we come here we select apple juice so before we do this you already know what's going to happen we click this right so apple juice is our label right but then the value that gets set is the value so when we click this it should say apple right and here it says apple so it doesn't say apple juice because apple juice is the label right if we come here just to reiterate pick our options we open this we format it you're going to see label is apple juice but the value is apple so label gets shown to the user value is what gets set okay perfect okay so now i've gone ahead and selected the ios preview because for the next part we need to be on ios or android okay so we come here on configs right our uh, component name basically we can rename to whatever we want uh the mode so that's what we're going to be looking at now uh placeholder we already talked about this so this is what it says select an option we can change that to whatever we want a set of text this is just text that explains um basically what this does so when you click it will be explaining down here uh then auto dis dismiss of the keyboard uh just as it says when this right when this is clicked um any keyboard is going to be dismissed right so the picker has different modes right so it offers three uh, different picker modes right if we come here we have native we have drop down and then we have drop down model right so native provides the platform native experience across web ios and android it feels seamless right but then the other thing is it's not compatible with models right so when you have a model this native is not going to become compatible with it so think of it in you know in simple terms think of it as native as native is going to be different on how it looks like on you know on ios it's going to be different how it looks like on android right so here we have native so if we click an option right and you see this is how it looks like on on an apple device right so native is like styled in you know in in an ios kind of way right 
And then if we go on Android, it's going to be styled in an Android type of way. So let's go in Android and see what the native looks like. Okay, so we now have an Android device. We click and you see, this is how it looks like on an Android device. So it looks different on an iOS device. It looks different on an Android device because it's native to that device, right? So that's what native does, right? Let's go back to iOS. Okay, so the next mode is drop down, right? So drop down, it creates a sort of like uh, a style that is consistent across different uh, platforms. So it creates a web style that's the same across different platforms. So it doesn't matter if you're on iOS, as you're going to see. All right, so this is what it looks like. So apple juice, orange, banana juice, right? We can click a value. So this is what it looks like on an, and on an iOS device. And then on an Android device. This is what it looks like. So this looks the same across all devices. Even on web, it's going to look the same, right? So let's go back to web. So on web, it looks the same. Uh, on iOS, it looks the same. Uh, on Android, it looks the same. Okay, so one issue that might happen sometimes, right? Uh, when you have different pickers, like in a form. So let's say we have a picker here, we have another picker here. We open this picker, then we open the other picker. They might overlap, right? So usually to fix that, uh, we can, you know, we can have what we can play around with what's known as the Z index. So the Z index just, uh, it creates sort of a, a, like different layers to say this view has a higher priority than this view. So this view can overlay the other view. So that's how we can play around with it. Okay. Then another, another mode that we have is the drop down model. So this can solve the issue that I was talking about where you have many of these different pickers in one form and they are overlapping one another. To solve that, we can also use this uh, drop-down model, right? So basically, this is what it does. You click it, it creates uh, a model around the drop-down. As you can see, it's, this is now a model, right? So that can solve the issue that we're talking about where they overlap one another. Okay, then finally, we can play around with the styles. So if you come here, we have the styles, uh, drop-down background color. If we come to the back, to the drop-down, uh, we can see right now it's white. We can change that to be light. You know, we can just play around with the with the styles. You see that background color changes. Um, drop down border radius. So these corners, right? You see they have a bit of radius. So this is what what we can change to affect that. Uh, drop down text color. So just text, we can change the color. All right. Let's have something. Let's have red, for example. See the color changes. All right. Place with a text color. Select an option. So we already changed that in the beginning. I selected icon color. So when I select Apple, this icon right now is black. We can change that color to say selected icon color. I want it to be this color. Right? Apple juice selected. And you see, it's now that color. So here we can just play around with all the styles, right? But then there are some situations we were like, you know, these styles, they're not enough. So how can we further play around with these styles. So inside your picker component, you click add, and then there's this thing called the picker item, right? You just click that, but it has to be inside the picker, right? And this only works under a certain type of mode. So if we come uh, here, the mode has to be drop down, right? So in native, it doesn't work. In drop down model, it doesn't work. It only works under drop down. So in the, your mode has to be drop down for this to work. Uh, then we go back to our pick item. Then we come to it. And you can see it has certain types of styles. So selected background color. Right? So right now it's like this. And then when you select, what do you want the background color to be? Right? And you saw before that we didn't have the access to these. So this is now further, uh, further like customization that we now have access to. So let's say selected, I want the color to be like this. Right? You see? Right? We can now play around with those styles selected text color what do you want the color to be when the item is selected i want it to be white let's go with that all right the color is now white you know so you can see you can keep going deeper and deeper with the customization of the picker component okay uh, so yeah guys i think that's it for the picker component uh, if you have any questions uh leave it down in the comments uh, please like the video Please share, please subscribe and yeah, see you in the next one.